Hello and welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time, welcome. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'm back from a short hiatus, and today I wanna to talk a bit about, not surprisingly, machine learning, but specifically, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a rant video about all these ridiculous times where I swear to God, nowadays, everyone tries to use machine learning for everything, absolutely everything, uh, and it, it makes my blood boil. Maybe not to that point, but um, it's a bit much. I wanna start off this video by talking about maybe in, in a bit of an example of what I mean by this. So going back to when I was doing one of my first internships, I was interning at Google and when you get an internship at Google, one of the first things they do is during the orientation, you go through all these like brainstorming sessions or these like problem sessions. Uh, they, have, they have several of them, but there's some Googler running it and then you have like a, a fair amount of interns and they will ask you some sorts of questions about, you know, consider this or that and what kind of solution would you come up with to solve this particular thing. So in one of these cases, one of the questions was, take the example where you're working on YouTube and your manager comes to you and they want you to design something, some way to get more cat videos on YouTube. Regardless of the reason, you know, what are some things you can do? And I swear to God, First guy just raises his hand, he's like, oh, me, 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 gets called on. And what was his answer? Of course, machine learning. Because why not? Why wouldn't you say machine learning? Anyway, machine learning is a really awful answer here. And if you don't know why, I this video will be a rant, but also I do kind of want to go into some of the reasons as to why using machine learning can be bad sometimes and what cases it's, you know, makes sense to use in. But in this case, there's so many other answers he could have gone with, so many. Just to give a few examples, you could feature more cat videos on the featured page to incentivize you know, uh, creators to make more cat videos. You could have made a cat video page, you know, and when they get featured on that page, well, that would probably make more people wanna make those videos. You could increase ad revenue for those videos. That's another one. And there are so many other things you can do. But out of all of those things, he decided to choose the hardest and probably most ineffective answer, just generate cat videos with machine learning. Why not? As I just said, a bit more than a rant, I do wanna go into why it isn't always great to use machine learning. So I've come up with five specific questions you can kind of ask yourself when you're trying to decide, or at least I use to decide whether or not I should use machine learning in one of my projects. So number one is, can your problem be solved, solved with machine learning in the first place? Because there's a lot of cases where, you know, the whole garbage in, garbage out thing, if you're trying to learn from some data, but that data actually doesn't have anything to be learned, right? Maybe what you're trying to do is actually impossible. Well, machine learning isn't, isn't gonna help you there. It's not some uh, be all end all for every problem. There are, you know, uh, quite a few problems where machine learning just can't help. Now this cat example probably could be solved with ML, albeit very difficult. But sometimes that's just not the case and you don't want to go, you know, spend several days working on a project only to find out at the end of it, oh shoot, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, especially if you could have foreseen that coming with just a little bit of analysis. Item number two is can you get the same results with a non-machine learning method? Machine learning is typically, you know, fairly difficult. It takes time, data, all these sorts of things. So if you can achieve the same result with another method, maybe you should consider that. An example of this is take DoorDash for an example, right? On the DoorDash app, you have a little chat bot for customer service, and I see this on all sorts of customer service sites. And lots of days now, they use this really fancy, uh, it's like a really fancy chat bot where you can ask it questions or ask for certain things and then it will respond and try and help you, right? So maybe you say, my order is late, what can I do? And then it gives you some response where it's like, uh, I don't know, you can press this button or do this thing. But the issue is that lots of the time it gets it wrong. Whereas an alternative to this, instead of having this very fancy chat bot that needs servers, that needs... Um, well, I guess all of them probably need servers, um, but that needs all these like models and probably money to run and all this stuff. You could just come up with pre-programmed responses and allow the users to select from like one, two or three options. I guess an argument against that is that maybe it's not as fast to get exactly what you want, but I don't know, I think it's a lot more intuitive just to tap certain things and get a response you know will be correct than you know, kind of take your chances with this really overly complicated chatbot. Case number three has to do with reliability and explainability. So if you've ever worked with deep learning, and this one is a bit more uh, 
focused on deep learning and not so much machine learning as a whole, but things like neural networks, you've probably heard the term, are black boxes. And what that means is it's not impossible to understand what goes inside them, but it is very difficult and it takes a lot of time and effort. It's not immediately obvious when you run you know, this input through a 20 layer network, how the output actually came to be. And reliability comes into play because when you are sort of using a neural network, say, and you pass through all this data and you get out a, an incorrect response, well, how do you correct that? Really, the only way is to try and fine tune your model more if you, but pro you've probably already done that, right? So really the only way is to get more data and feed more data through it. And even then you don't know if it's gonna fix it, right? It's very difficult. And if it does fix it, maybe it breaks other things in the model, which is very, you know, not ideal. And it's really hard to overcome. And this is one of the big weaknesses of deep learning specifically right now is, you know, sometimes it's just wrong and, and there's not much you can do about that. That's especially an issue in production. Whereas if you were using a hard coded model like these, you just touch buttons, right? Oh, if there's a typo in one of them or if it gives the wrong information, you take five minutes to go change the information and it's done. So that's why reliability and explainability, if either of those things are very important to whatever product you're building, machine learning might not be the best case, or at least you might need to add on to just ML. You might need to have other sorts of things in collaboration with that. Item number four goes back to the idea of, are, if there are other methods other than machine learning, are those methods more you know, computationally efficient or are they faster to do? Machine learning, is usually, it usually takes longer than these pre-programmed methods, right? Because you have to do all this like math matrix stuff, like matrix multiplication, all this, you know, stuff. I guess this is, again, for neural networks, there are, you know, decision trees, obviously, you're not gonna be doing that. Though there is still math to decide things like Gini indices and stuff like that. But anyway, they tend to be less computationally efficient than something like these pre-programmed responses. Now, if you do use something like TensorFlow and you make a really small, efficient model, you know, there's all these light models, which are really great, but even so, you're still gonna see a latency increase. Let's say you get, you know, let's say you make a model for this chatbot and you get the latency down to 50 seconds to run this whole thing. That's pretty good, right? You said, or sorry, not 50 seconds, 50 milliseconds. 50 seconds is awful. But 50 milliseconds, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, you know, not too bad. I, I would agree 50 milliseconds for something like a chatbot probably isn't too bad. But then you have to, you know, stop and consider what if you're working on you know, either one of these chatbots or something like Google Assistant or Alexa or, oh, you can see I have one right back there that just activated, oops. I pronounce that or, but I'm always working Alexa, on stop. Something. But anyway, let's say you have one of these assistants and you're only increasing by 50 milliseconds, but if you're you know, serving millions of customers or tens of millions of customers every you know, few hours or days, well, that, 50 milliseconds suddenly is gonna be, you know, hours or days wasted of customer's time, and that's probably not going to be great for your product. So even though you can usually make these things somewhat efficient, it's still probably, usually, not always, but usually gonna be faster to use a non-machine learning method if that's possible. So the fifth and final tip I have, and just quick before I do that, if you wanna subscribe, like the video, it really does help out a lot, I really do appreciate it. But back to the fifth and final item, it has to do with, is using machine learning for this project really worth your time? And by that, I mean machine learning can be hard. It can be time consuming, and there are a lot of challenges that come with it that you know don't come with a lot of other methods. One example is that you have to have data usually. Now, there are some cases where you don't have to have as much data. Reinforcement learning, for example, is a very different case, but if you're doing supervised learning, which tends to be very common, you need a lot of data. You can, all, I guess there are caveats like, oh, there's transfer lane and all these things, but collecting data can be timely and expensive, and sometimes you might not even have the data you need. And if that's the case you're in, this might be pretty difficult. Now, even if you have the data, the next sort of challenge you come across is training. Training can take time. It can take a lot of money if you're training a big model. And the last thing is, once you finish training, you don't know if your model is always gonna work. You know, sometimes, Things just don't work, and this goes back to the whole black box idea, because machine learning can be a black box, deep learning specifically, when things don't work, there's not always a straightforward path to debug this. And when you're working at a company, and you're reporting to a boss, and you just spend spent a whole month on this really big project, implementing all this machine learning stuff, you finally got all this data, spent all this money to train the model, if it doesn't work, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Where you, you can't necessarily say, the same thing for non-machine learning methods. And that's, you know, one sort of big downside of machine learning at this point in time is that 
we're not at a stage where we have models that work for absolutely everything. Sometimes you'll try something and it just won't work and, and that's the nature of the beast, I guess. But anyway, that was my last tip. Now, if you didn't like my five tips, you think you have better ones, or if you did like them and you wanna add some extra details, definitely leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, it means a lot. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.